Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a review and flip through of Apologia's Math 6. This is their brand new math curriculum. It looks amazing. I'm so excited to use it this year and I'm going to go ahead and flip around the camera, give you guys a look inside so you can see if this is something that you wanna use in your homeschool. All right, you guys, so this is the student book for Apologia Math 6. Now, as you open it up, you get an acknowledgements page and then you jump right into the table of contents. You can see all of the lessons that you're gonna be going over and what page numbers those land on. Now, the next page is an introduction to exploring creation with mathematics level six. It gives you just a brief overview of um, some of the icons that you're gonna find throughout the book and what they mean. On the next page is a password that you can use for some additional book extras. So if you feel like your child needs a little extra practice and different things like that, um, you're going to get an introduction to the first unit. This is where they are going to work in God and science and I absolutely love that. Now, at the time of filming on Apologia's website, it is $60.75 for the parent-student combo set. Or you can purchase uh, just the student book for $43.50 and the teaching guide for $17.25. Now, this is a curriculum written from a biblical worldview, so there will be occasional scripture throughout the book, as well as mentions of the Bible and God. And like I said, you know, at the beginning of every unit, there is a science connection as well as a God connection. So how is God working um, in our lives through math and the upcoming lessons that your child is going to learn? Now, this curriculum consists of 15 chapters with a review at the end of each one. There are a total of six unit projects and 117 lessons. Each lesson is going to be about three to four pages long and uh, your child will build a mastery of math concepts through a spiral approach. And one of the things that I really like is that this curriculum is designed to be done four days a week. So you have that extra day to either use it as a fun Friday, a catch-up day for whatever your child missed, or a co-op day. Basically, the sky is the limit. Now, the goal of this curriculum is for your student to master fractions, decimals, and percents. And they do this by using manipulatives, answering problems, and fun activities. The projects at the end of each chapter is meant to be a time where your child can put everything that they've learned together into a fun and creative, easygoing way. There are chapter tests available in the back of the teacher's guide as well as on their website that you can go ahead and print and you can use these in place of the projects or alongside them. Now, the supplies needed will be mostly made up of common household items, but there will be a few items that you'll need to make sure that you have on hand um, that you might have to purchase because you don't have it at home. Uh, these are going to be some fraction tiles, 3D shapes, and a protractor. Now, prior to each lesson, you should set aside about five to 10 minutes for skills practice. This can be found at the beginning of every unit in the teacher's guide, and it will walk you through what skills to be practicing and give you some fun and creative ideas on how to practice them as well as um, what you are looking for your child to have mastered. Now, uh, I did not see an estimated time that it takes for each lesson, but these are short hands-on lessons. And I'm guesstimating they'll take about 20 to 45 minutes, just depending on the lesson and the child and how fast they pick up each concept. This can obviously be more or less, this is just my personal guesstimate, um, looking at each one and thinking about how long they would take my son. Now, at the start of each lesson, there will be a brief intro to what you will need and an overview of what you'll be doing, as well as the skills practice that I mentioned previously. There are additional resources in the teacher's guide that you'll need for some of the activities and games, as well as the traditional answer keys for the lessons and tests. There's also a sheet that gives you seven questions to ask to help develop problem-solving strategies. So if your child gets stuck on something, 
as well as a suggested schedule. Now, one of the things that I liked was the author's acknowledgement page at the beginning of the student book that I showed you guys at the start. Uh, she states that she created the outline for Math 6 prior to creating the first five levels, and she did this so she could properly prepare students for the higher levels in math. And I really like that because I think it shows just how intentional their entire math curriculum is because they knew what their end goals were before they even started. Now, in the majority of the lessons, there will be anywhere from one to three examples for your student to follow. And another thing that I really liked is that the problems your child is given independently looks just like the examples that um, the book is walking your child through. And if you guys have been around here for any length of time, you know that I have had issues in previous math curriculums where they give a very simple example and then the independent work is more complex. And so I really like that the examples look just like the problems that your child is expected to solve by themselves. Now I'm going to finish flipping through the book for you all just so you can get a good idea of what all of the lessons look like. And then I will go ahead and walk you through a few lessons as well as giving you a glimpse inside the teacher's guide. All right, you guys, so just to walk you guys through the teacher's guide real quick, as you open it, you get your table of contents, and then you get the week by week daily schedule. So like I mentioned, it's only four days a week, and within the schedule, it uh, works in not only the lessons, but also your projects and your chapter reviews. You get the introduction uh, pages, a uh, daily skills practice overview, and then some teacher's notes along with a supply list. And at the very back of the book, you get a supply list for the entire year so you can go ahead and pick up everything um, all at once with the exception of some food items that you'll need throughout the curriculum and not necessarily all in one lesson. And this is that skills practice that I was talking about. So it will give you the skills that your child will need to um, master prior to moving on to the next unit. It gives you some game ideas and like this one right here, it tells you note card problems. So this is one of my favorite ways to do skills practice when the skill itself is pretty taxing. I just write out one problem on a note card or post it. Have your child do that one problem before starting the lesson. And here are problems you can use. There are enough for the whole skills practice. And so it'll give you the practice questions that your child should know. And then here is what the answer key looks like. It has the picture of the page that your child will be working on with the answers in blue. And then towards the end of the book, you will have your activity sheets. And these can be ripped out, cut, and then your child can use those for the activities and games that they are going to play throughout the, uh, throughout the year. Now, once you get past that, you can find the chapter tests. And so, for example, this is the chapter three test, and it is front and back, but 
no more than that. So it is a very quick to the point test, no fluff, no, um, you know, three or four pages that makes your child feel stressed or overwhelmed. I really like that. Uh, aspect of the curriculum and now I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through what an actual lesson looks like. Alright so I'm going to show you guys one lesson at the beginning of the book and then I'll flip to the very end and show you another lesson so you kind of get an idea of like start to finish and what that looks like. So lesson five you're going to be working on long division and so you're going to do your five to ten minutes of the skills practice that I just showed you guys and then um, you're going to need a lesson five activity sheet. This is found in the teacher's guide and you're going to need some scissors and so here is a glance of what that looks like your child will cut this out and then um, they'll cut out each block and then they'll mix it up and then put the steps in the correct order on how to solve the long division problem and then they jump into two different examples on how to solve a long division problem and then as far as the actual work that they do that day, here it is. So as you can see, it is quick, straight, to the point, no fluff. I absolutely love that. Now let me jump to the end of the book and show you guys a lesson there. All right, so this is lesson 115. They're going to be going over surface area. So it says you will need a box that can be any size, a ruler or tape measurer. So what your child is going to do is they're going to measure the length, width, and height of their box in either centimeters or inches, depending on the size of their box. They will use uh, the measurements to label one of the diagrams below. Choose the diagram that most closely matches your box. Now they're going to find the area of each face of the box. They can do this by either drawing a sketch or actually writing the area on each surface of the box. If you'd like to sketch the faces, you can do that in this area below. And now you're gonna add up all of the areas and find the total surface area and you'll write the answer for that right here. Now, as far as the remaining work for the rest of the day, this is their assignment. They will use these four boxes to find the surface area and they will write their answers below. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is what a project looks like. So I'm gonna go all the way to the back. Now this is the um, unit six project. It is a marshmallow mansion. So you're going to need a bag of marshmallows, some glue, and several pieces of cardstock or thick paper. And so your child is going to create a three by four rectangle of marshmallows, and they will glue that to the cardstock, and then they're going to add a second layer of marshmallows, and then they are going to calculate what the volume of the marshmallows is is and then once they get to step three they will build a mansion that has a length of five a width of four and a height of three and then from there they will find the volume of the marshmallows cubed Stage four, they will work in 32 marshmallows. They will use them to build a mansion that has a volume of 32 marshmallows. Record the dimensions below. There is more than one right answer. So they'll um, consider length, width, and height. They will do the same thing in step five with 60 marshmallows. And this also mentions how there is more than one right answer. And then step six is them continuing to use 60 marshmallows, but coming up with a different way that they could have used them. And so I think that's fun. Kids love marshmallows, you guys. <laughs> so um, I think that this will be really fun. And this is a low key project. This is not anything that's gonna take, you know, two or three weeks to work on. That's going to require a lot of effort on the parent. Um, that is one of the things that I really like about this is, you know, we have multiple kids. So sometimes doing crafts, really stresses me out just because there's a lot of prep work a lot of planning and so you know initially when you hear the word project you're thinking this is going to be in depth and this is not you know this is as in depth as you want to make it so you know if you want to make it even more in depth than this then you can just have them use the entire bag of marshmallows and keep giving them different um, numbers to use with them 
but I like that this is not anything that feels overwhelming for the parent and it's something that is achievable for the child. Now the final page in the student book is a congratulations you completed uh, this curriculum. They can take a fun little picture and I love that that's worked in. So that is the end of the review. Uh, I'm going to turn around the camera now. All right, you guys, so that is the end of the review and flip through. I hope that it helped to see inside and just get a feel for the curriculum, see if this is something that would work for your family. If you are interested in checking it out, I will have their website linked down below in the description bar. If uh, you have used Apologia Math in the past, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on it. Make sure that you comment that down below, as well as if you plan on using their level six this year. If you are looking for a review and flip through on their grade two math, I will have that linked right here. Other than that, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and I will see you again later. Bye!